I come most Sundays to meeting for worship and that's a place which grounds me and it's a place which also energizes me. It's a place where I meet fellow Quakers who share my values about what's important. I learn from what they do. It's a place where I can be open and explore my spirituality. Quakers don't have a creed and it's a place where I can therefore think about what's important. The important thing is to get involved. If you start coming and get involved and want to um, be more of a part of the meeting, then you can apply to become a member. Well, I would want to encourage them. Come, come to one of our meetings. You'd be very welcome. Come and find out for yourself. I could tell you about um, who we are. I could tell you that we're a group of people who are looking to lead better lives. It's not a space where you have to be uh, a particular person where you have to act a certain way to fit in. It's a space that is so welcoming. But some people don't become members at all. They just keep coming and enjoy being part of it. So it's up to people individually if they want to become a member. They don't have to have a particular faith. It's, it's a welcoming space for anyone who just wants to take some time out for, for an hour in the week. I could tell you what goes on in the silence or what I think goes on in the silence. I could tell you that uh, we try to shut out the noise of everyday life and um, to listen for guidance as to how we should lead our lives. But a much better way for, for you to understand that would be to, to, come, to come and try it for yourself. I would say that it, you could say it's harder to gain young people. It is, does sometimes seem to be harder to gain younger members. Um, there are lots of reasons why this might be the case. Sitting in a meeting in silence is not that easy for people who have children, and a lot of younger people do have children. Uh, I don't think Quakers are very well known, and we have to take responsibility for that. We are thinking about how to make ourselves more visible in the city. If people come along to a meeting and see a lot of older people there, they might just feel a bit alienated. Nobody tells you what to believe in Quakers, so you have to um, work it out for yourself. And maybe that's not everybody's cup of tea. Speaking just from my experience, as a teenager, I wasn't interested. <laughs> um, I came when I was little because it was, it was you know, we, we did fun stuff that's fun to do when you're young. Um, we have a children's meeting upstairs. It's where I learned to pick up cheesy what's it with a chopsticks and, um, and important stuff like that. But um, in my teenage years, I kind of, I wasn't interested and we do that thing of, you know, rejecting what our parents tell us to do. Recently, our young people's group has restarted after three years of not having one. And we meet together once a month and have bring and share lunch and have discussions and get to know each other. And I think that that's, that's gonna be really helpful to for young people to feel more of a part of the meeting. So I've been coming here since I was tiny, then it feels like home. Um, I guess for young people, you know, when, when you're a teenager, there's so much stuff that you're going through, there's so much stuff going on, um, that, that that's not always, I think, the time when people necessarily find their faith or find a space that works for them. But I think there's quite a few people who come to Quaker meeting in their 20s and their 30s when we're getting for that place where we're really searching for where do I belong and, and what works for me and finding things that work on your own terms. Yeah. I was about 30 and there was an advertisement in a national newspaper and it said, <clears throat> don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And um, I read it and it said right off from a material from the Quakers and I did so my wife and I got it back and we said good heavens there's a group of people who think like us. I was born into a Quaker family both my parents were Quakers and they brought me here to the Quaker meeting in fact I came to Sunday school in this very room and attended the meeting and because it was wartime I was sent to a Quaker boarding school up in Yorkshire. I'd been going to church uh, from the time I was about 17, uh, but I couldn't understand <clears throat> why the church wasn't pacifist, and I couldn't understand how priests had got into the business when nothing is mentioned by Jesus. 
And so uh, that, that was my way of finding it out. And what I valued, and still value now, was that this freedom to formulate, to discuss, to develop your own beliefs and values, but also you're doing this in a community, sharing with other people, listening to them, and going forward together. And I decided that that was the reason why I wanted to continue being a Quaker, and it's still the reason why I'm a Quaker now. All right. Um. Um, when I was little, a lot of my friends would say, aren't you the people that make porridge? <laughs> I think a lot of people imagine that Quakers are especially good and <laughs> That is not particularly true. Now I'm in my 20s, I, I find a lot of people are really intrigued, um, but it's one of those things that not many people know much about. I mean, Quakerism is, is a way of life, and um, therefore people who are Quakers and are involved in meeting do try to live in such a way as to leave the world in a, a better place than they found it. Um, but they are human and not so different from anybody else. People have vague little ideas about, oh, is it linked with Christianity or is it quite extreme or, you know, don't... Someone said to me the other day, um, don't you just not drink alcohol? Is that something to do with it? But So it seems there's a lot of misconceptions. People are quite unclear about um, what it is we do, what it is we practice, what it is we believe. Uh, the other common misconception is, is that we are something to do with Quaker Oats, which we are not. And a third one that occurs to me is that we wear grey a lot and look rather plain and dull. And whilst that was true at an earlier time in our history, it's no longer the case, as you can see from the way I'm dressed today. Well, here you see in the burial ground, we've been burying Quakers here for the last 300 odd years. And for about the last 200 years, they've had gravestones, which as you see, are very simple. We just mark the name and the day they died and either how old they were or the day they were born. No special epitaphs, no grandiosity. And that's because we believe in the utter equality of all people uh, in life as well as in death. That doesn't mean to say that the Quakers who were buried here lived uneventful lives. Many of them did, and they did that in the spirit of looking for the best, that of God in everyone, which is what makes us all equal. So they opposed things like slavery, things like capital punishment, were advocates for peacemaking rather than war-making, looking for the best in everyone, but in no way were they naive about it. We worship in stillness, sometimes called silence, but it's a community silence, so that we are sharing with each other our experiences, and our experiences are very important. We do occasionally have spoken ministry, people who will get up because they feel particularly moved to say something, and that will be in the spirit of our whole system of work and belief, and that of God in us, and that of God in our community. Sweden who has decided to boycott school because she feels it's not worth learning about science when the governments of the world are ignoring the climate science that is coming out at the moment. Although we do have Quakers who are good at music and can sing, uh, we even occasionally have hymns but it's always very much spontaneous. So most of the meeting will be in silence. But in that silence we are gathered to get to the spirit of what's driving us and leading us to leave our lives.